Okay, in this problem we have a um, man that is 38 kilograms and the person is standing in a platform that is allowed to rotate. So this person, uh, my drawing is not so pretty, please look at the slide that is much bigger than mine. So that person holds the dumbbells over here and is spinning on one uh, uh, angular velocity, right? As soon as it expands the arms to 0 0.65, then it has a different inertia, so this angular velocity will change. So what we want to find is that change in angular velocity when that person is extending the arms and retracting the arms. We are being told that when he has that extender arm, the angular velocity is 0 0.5 revol revolutions per second. And we want to find the angular velocity when it retracts the arms. We are being told, as you can read in the slide, that he is considered a cylinder. If we look at the top view, let's, let's draw top view. When the arm are extended arms, and when we have retracted arms. So when we have extended arms, the person is considered to be a cylinder of a diameter of 40 millimeters. And then the arms right here with the dumbbells over here, right? And the arms are 0 0.65, and this is 0 0.2 because it's 0, point, uh, it's 0 0.2, the diameter of that cylinder right here, right? And when it's retracted, then we have only one cylinder, and the dumbbells are right here, right? And this cylinder. Is to be is to con is to be considered 425. So this is the radius will be 225 millimeters. You see? Okay. Now, if we take moment respect to the this top view, as you see, the weight, the weight of the arms, and the weight of the person right here are perpendicular. To the plane of motion. So the weight is, if we see this top view, the weight goes to inside the uh, my glass, right? So it's perpendicular to the plane of motion. So as you see, there is not any force because we cannot draw the weight. The weight is perpendicular to the motion. So here we have an angular velocity in this direction. So and this is angular velocity. The angular velocity given is this, let's call this one, and let's call this two. This is when the arm is extended and when it's retracted. Apply the principle of angular momentum to the top view, right, to the plane, that plane, which is, will be, this is x, and this is y, we have that the adding all the moments, the integral of the moment respect to time will be equals to the final uh, angular momentum minus initial angular momentum. But as you see, the weight of those all those uh, elements is perpendicular to the plane. So we do not have any force that create moment respect to the axis of rotation, which is this one right here. So therefore, this is equals to zero, and we can say that we have conservation of angular momentum. And therefore, we can say that the angular momentum in both cases are equal and the definition of angular momentum respect to the center of mass, that in this case is the axis of rotation, will be the mass moment of inertia of 
the body respect to each in each case. So we have to calculate the mass moment of inertia in this position, and we have to calculate the mass moment of inertia in this position. We know the angular velocity when we have extended arms, and we want to find the angular velocity for retracted arms. What elements do we have in position two, which is, this is when the, the arm, I name this position retracted arms, extended arms, right? So what are my three elements when we have an extended arm? We have the cylinder of the body, we have the two arms, and we have the dumbbells. In the case of retractor arms, we only have the cylinder and the um, dumbbells. So the dumbbells are considered particles. We have to the, this inertia, let's make it in a bracket, right? So we have two dumbbells. The mass of each dumbbell is five, so we can say, well, it's five in each case, so we will have ten, right? Ten, and what is the, where, where are they located? Uh, they are located, when they are retracted, you see at 0 0.3 squared. So this is the um, mass moment of inertia of a particle. Remember the mass moment of inertia of a particle? in its own axis is zero, so we are actually applying the parallel axis theorem where we apply mass times the distance to the axis of rotation. So, um, let, me, let me draw that correctly because we, this, this could be confusing my drawing. So we do have a cylinder of the person and the dumbbells are located a little bit farther, right here, right? So this is the hand of that person. So this here, that distance, let me write it down to here, is 0 0.3. So we have the cylinder that represents the person, and then the, we have the particles that we, with the mass moment of inertia respect to that point is zero, but we move it, which is mass times the distance. And then we have the mass moment of inertia of the disk. As you remember, the mass moment of inertia of a cylinder is one half. The mass and the mass of the men is 68. 68 is the body plus the two arms, and the two arms is 6, so it will be 12. So because when we have retracted all the men, the hands and the body, so the mass of here, this mass, is 68 plus the two arms, which is 12. So the mass is 80 kilograms, right? In the contrary, here we have that this mass is 68, and each arm is 6. Okay, that makes sense? Okay, so we have, and the, uh, the, the radius of that cylinder is 0 0.25. So let's call this all that. This is the inertia in the retracted arm position. And I have this value over here. So this value over here gives me 3.825, this is square, right, kilograms, meter, to square. Okay, now I have to calculate when I have an extended arms. When I have extended arms, which is this position, I have the inertia of the body, plus the inertia of the arms, plus the inertia of the dumbbells. So that will be equals to, the inertia of the body is a cylinder, the mass is 68, and the radius of that cylinder is 0 0.4, 0 0.2 because the diameter is 0 0.4. And then I have the arms, which is a, the inertia of the arms, remember that if we want to have it in the center, the table gives us in the center of gravity of each of the arms, which is 112. So it will be 2 times 112 times the mass of each arm times the length of each arm, which is 0 0.65. And the parallel axis theorem, I have to translate from this a center of gravity to the axis, which is 0 0.2 plus the half of 0 0.65, which is 0 0.2 plus 0 0.325, which is 
then the mass times 0 0.525 square. Those are the two arms, then I have to add the dumbbells. As I said before, the dumbbells are just particles. They don't have mass moment of inertia respect to its own axis, but I have to translate it to the using the parallel axis, so I have to use this distance. So it will be two times the mass of those two, right, times 0. Point, uh, in this case will be 0. 0.2 plus 0. 0.65, which is 0. 0.85, right? Square. So that's the value, and that value is equal to 19.54 kilograms meters square. Okay, so I was able to calculate this value. I was able to calculate this value. I am given this value, which is 0 0.5, and from here, I have to say that the velocity that I want to find when the arms are retracted will be the mass moment of inertia of the initial position times omega 1 divided by the value that we found for the mass moment of inertia. So if we put, plug those values in here in this little corner that I have left, will be the 1, which is 19.54 times um, angular velocity, which is 0 0.5 divided by other, this one right here, which is 3.84. And that gives me a value, I'm going to write it right here, equals to 2.55 revolutions. So, in conclusion is that when the person had their arms extended, it was it did one revolution, a 0 0.5 revolution per second, and as soon as he diminished, the mass moment of inertia, the velocity increased. So if you compare that mass moment of inertia to that mass moment of inertia, it's a big difference, and that difference is compensated by the angular velocity. So that is the same trick, so to say, that the dancers use when they extend the arms or the ice skaters when they contract the arms they spin much faster.